Tell me about designing for spaces, because you, d you, you go into very different spaces. You go into set theaters like a Shaw or a Stratford or whatever, but you also design in, in spaces that aren't set. How do you feel the bones of a space? Well, that, 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 that's part and parcel of how I, how I proceed. I'm not afraid of any space, to be quite honest. Um, the space, to me, is like a black box. It's just a space. It's an empty space. It's a void. Even a structured one like... Like Stratford. Like Stratford. Right? Yeah, it has to be. I have to work it as a, blank, a black box to start with to find out what it is I see in that space. You know the play, you've read the play obviously, maybe two or three times, and what is the one scene that stands out the strongest in your imagination, in your vision? The one moment that is so real to you, you can smell it, taste it, feel it, whatever. It may not be the beginning of the play or the end of the play, it may be just a small moment in the play that you suddenly know where this takes place. And I just look at it as a blank box, a black space. Put a character in that black space and find out what's around the character, what clothing they're wearing, what is around the character. And then, once you've discovered that and it's real to you, take away the blackness and find out what spaces they're in at that time. Now, that's the way I used to work, uh, and still do, actually, from time to time. Um, you know, they talk about, uh, you know, a, a writer not being able to, to write, you know, going blank or whatever the case may be. Well, designers can do that, too. Designers can go blank. We've got the text in front of us. But when you've designed four or five productions of a certain thing, and you're moved in all these different spaces, sometimes you wonder, well, you know, when I did it at this theater, it was this way, but I can't do it here. And you, you get a kind of blank. That's when you go to the black box. Right. Find the moment. But say in the, in the Shaw main stage, yeah. doesn't that the and that and yeah. the audience here in stage there, doesn't mm -hmm. that dictate a kind of key sure. signature and you've got to work within it? Sure it does. You know, it's but that's the black box. That's the frame. The frame in the theater, the back wall, the ceiling, the floor right. is the black box. But does and it tell you things that you can't do within there? Or can you do anything in there? I never say I can't do anything in any theater to start with. Right. Because if I do, I'm going to be designing around the limitations of that theater. I would much rather design the show and then make the, comp the right compromises to take in what the limitations are. For example, if I want to see um, a piece of scenery flying in diagonally, you can't do that at the Shaw Festival because it's a, pr a proper proscenium theater with the flies going straight this, this way. But that won't stop me from designing it. I just find another way of doing it, Right. you see. And it may change the design a little bit here or there but I'm not going to design into limitations. It's the same thing, Robert, of, of designers designing into technology. Right. You know, deadly, deadly. Technology is there to serve the design. The design is not there to serve the technology. And yet you like technology. I love technology. I mean, you put the slides in the, in the oh, serum. Yeah, and I love the new technology that's allowing me more freedom to do what I want to do. A lot more freedom than than you. So is it is it maturity then in you that you you see a new technical trick and it doesn't become the foreground? It is in the background. Of well, your yeah, life? I don't uh, I, I I I don't like the term technical I trick. Know, I know, I know. Okay, I know, I know. but the fact is that my exploration of design over all the years and what have you is has somehow been heading in a certain direction, and one of the directions is attempting to make it simplify it, try to simplify what we're doing. The discovery that Shaw was a surrealist and not a naturalist has made a huge difference in the designing of Shaw's plays. Right. Huge difference. Get rid of the Victorian drapes. Get rid of the dusty fireplaces. Get rid of all those aspidestrous and ferns and plants. Get rid of them all so the actors can actually, the audience can actually hear what the actors are saying because there's all that visual noise around. Get rid of it all. 
you do have to give the actor a crutch. You have to give them something. But look, look at what Denise Coffey did with Pygmalion. A black floor, four bentwood chairs, and a handful of talented, talented actors with costume. And that was it. And you think of Pygmalion with all those Victorian sets, as Mrs. Higgins and Higgins' library and all that sort of stuff, and there was nothing. And, I was, and this is a wonderful story. I was out in the lobby one day, and I overheard a lady say to another lady, wasn't that dancing scene, the grand ball scene, beautiful? The costumes and diamonds and everything. And yeah, the costumes were pretty spectacular. You know, the clothing on the actors was pretty darn good. And she said, and the room filled with chandeliers. It was amazing. There wasn't a chandelier in the set. They saw it up here. Right. That's when I knew I was successful in one production in my life. <laughs> that they saw a set that wasn't there. They saw it. Yeah. Just with the way the actors were moving, the colors. The chandelier came out of all the, the glitter that was on the clothing, the necklaces and diamonds and the hair, you know, with the feathers and, and the, the, the tiaras. It just reached up into the sky and created chandeliers. So why do you think we all grabbed onto naturalism for so long? Naturalism in sets, naturalism in acting, naturalism in sound, naturalism, you know, everybody wanted that. Why did we hang on to that for so long? Well, evolution is one thing. Evolution from Evolution of the philosophy of theater. It came about, you know, that whole naturalism came about through Stanislavski. You know, that whole period. You get, you get people like Adolf Apier and, and Gordon Craig, you know, the great founders of design in, in the theater. They were great sonographers, which is a new word that's just being used now. They were up with the original sonographers, the original total vision people. And out of the, uh, through that came Stanislavski, who was searching for the truth. In, in the performance, truth in the words. But he was reacting to something that came He was the reacting to Trump Doy, which was total f farce, you know, uh, two-dimensional. Two-dimensional, and then, of course, the evolution was two-dimensional scenery, like backdrops and painted flats with real chairs in front of them. Now, Trump Doy, is that? Painted reality, if right. you like, you know. In the acting as well as the sets? Well, I, I mean, my, my, this kind of stuff? well, yeah, that kind of stuff. I know exactly what you mean, and I would think a lot of that went on. Because for me, when I look at when I look at acting, there's the Shakespearean period, then you go to the Restoration, then you go into the Baroque, and yeah. it has multi-dimensionals, and then the Baroque style decayed, as it were, and kind of right. collapsed into two dimensions. That's so correct. So the kind of this which That's you got right. in 1880 That's right. is a collapse of the more dynamic and dimensional kind of Baroque work. And, and one of the things was, it, it, the way I see it, is this, that the, the, it was the light bulb that had changed the whole concept of theatre. Because before that, you had to have the big movements, the big clothing, the big colour to, to communicate uh, uh, to an audience because they could hardly see it. White face. White faces, big, lots of big, makeup, a yeah, whole thing. Big eyebrows. Yeah, absolutely. Number five and number when the nine. light bulb came along, that was, was the kiss of death to Trump Doy. That was the kiss of death to having painted two dimensional scenery with three dimensional props in front because you could see it didn't work. Hence, the whole thing changed. And they started saying, well, we have to have real scenery like we have real props. And we have real scenery now, so we have to have a real floor. Let's, let's cover the stage floor with dirt. Or in the case of some, <clears throat> excuse me, some productions, they went out and di dismembered houses to build them on the stage, you know, in reality. And then the reaction to that was, this is ridiculous. This is a love affair with naturalism. Yeah, love affair with naturalism. I want to really see the yeah, lower like depths. Every, you know, <laughs> in lower depths, absolutely. Um, so then there was a big reaction to that. And, the paint, and, and, and there was a moment there when painters came back in, like Picasso uh, and, and uh, um, well, Leon Basque, of course, and Ballet Russe, and all the painters came back. There was a huge reaction to that as well afterwards. The reaction against the reaction? Against it. Against. Where, the, where some of the, the intellects of the time would say, listen, if I want to see painting, I'll go to an art gallery. <laughs> I want to see a performance. Right. And that's when it started to change into close to, you know, where we are heading now. 
But, but the Shaw Festival was very naturalistically different. Absolutely. Because Good it, it, many years there. And because Bernard Shaw, bless his long eyebrows and his beard, told you everything in the script what he wanted on the right. stage. Yes. Everything. Long the, height, the height of the of doorknobs <laughs> off the floor. Everything. You've got, you know, you've got these huge pages, of course, and everybody, with the way we were trained at that time, was that the, the playwright was gone. Whatever the playwright says, we have to do it. And most of the directing that was done in Canada in the early days was to discover what the playwright meant. Well, the playwright knows what he means. He should have been discovering what does the playwright mean to you. And that's what you're putting on the stage, you see. And therefore, you got all this naturalistic stuff of vast pedestrians on spiral staircases and carpets over and carpets went, over cups. Oh my gosh! And it, by the it. time you got down to looking at the actor on the stage, it was Act Two. Yeah. <laughs> you know, get rid of it. Just get rid of it. And we started doing that in Vancouver. Oh, it was start, what started with Christopher in Vancouver, pruning back, getting rid of things. First of all, we didn't have any money to build sets like that. So let's do it on a black box. Let's do it on a black floor. You know, and uh, we did the Count of Monte Cristo with no scenery whatsoever. It just you know. And do you think the audience uh, distaste or tiring for naturalism uh, was behind where the artists were, or because it is a it is a tiring of naturalism, and it's ended up parked in you know CSI and television. They yeah. they, they parked firmly in, in naturalism, and it's a bit of a joke. It is, but it's um, yeah, audiences. In some ways, one has to be careful because we go to the theater to see the theater is what we say. We go to the symphony to hear the symphony. And we go to a library to read a book and we listen to the radio. These are all t terms. But we go to see a play. So if you don't have anything on the stage to see, are we in a kind of form of radio? where we're just listening to the words. We were at a certain point. And we were. And therefore, you have to strike a balance. And the Denise Coffey's black box, shiny floor with beautiful costumes, Pygmalion, was close to being a radio show because we put on stage Bernard Shaw. I don't know if you saw it or not, but Herbie Foster played Bernard Shaw. He read the stage directions. He came out on stage and said, to the left there's a piano, to the right there's this, to the right there's that, the da 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 and he described the scene perfectly. And then the actors came in and acted with four bentwood chairs. <laughs> and that was it. And every time we changed scenery, Shaw came in and he'd move a chair here and he'd move a chair there and he would, she had him actually quote Shaw's stage directions. Well, it was brilliant. It was just brilliant. It added one more character to the play. I'm sure the general manager was checking the books to see if they could afford it or not, but that's what it was.